Hey there, I'm Ann Garden, and this is episode 99 of the Unveiled Podcast. Thanks for joining me. So today I want to talk about one of my favorite things to talk about, and I can't believe that I have never done a podcast episode on this subject before. It's how to hear God's voice. I learned how to hear God's voice, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, and it absolutely changed my life. And it's going to change yours as well. So I encourage you to take notes, go back and listen to this again if you need to, and actually try what I'm about to tell you. Because if you do, I guarantee it's going to change your life. My husband and I teach a whole course on this, but I'm going to give it to you in a nutshell. And I think you can take it just with this little bit and run with it. And that is the four keys to hearing God's voice. And it is a course that is taught by Mark Verkler. And I will put a link to some more of his resources in the description if you want to uh, further explore this topic. But trust me, I'm going to give you enough to get started. The first thing to know is that God is always speaking to you. And you've probably heard his voice before, but you didn't realize it. I love the verse of John 10, 27. It says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And people who have sheep always tell me that the sheep do recognize their shepherd's voice. And Jesus tells us that we will recognize his voice as well because he is speaking to us. And that is such a beautiful thing. So there's times where you've probably thought, huh, I wonder if that was God speaking, or I don't know where that thought came from, but that's a great idea. Those are God speaking to you, or sometimes, wow, I'm glad I remembered that. I almost forgot. That too could be God speaking to us and saving our bacon for us, which I always appreciate when he does that. So the four keys, I know you can't wait to hear them. The four keys to hearing God's voice, stillness, vision, spontaneity, and journaling. Okay, so the first one, stillness, is about quieting ourselves before God. So we just got to quiet ourselves. It's good to be in a quiet place. You can hear God anywhere, but in a quiet place, it is often easier to learn to hear him. So stillness, quiet yourself down. The second one is vision. And what that means is Fix your eyes on Jesus. Now, we can't always see Jesus with our physical eyes, but we can use our godly imagination to do that. So in your mind, you picture things all the time. So picture Jesus in your mind and picture yourself with him. And it can be you're picturing yourself in a Bible story or you're picturing him with you in your favorite chair, at your favorite lake, whatever it might be. It doesn't really matter but it gives your mind something to focus on, okay? So focus on Jesus. This also kind of puts you in your right brain, which makes this process a little bit easier. So stillness, vision, visualizing yourself with Jesus and focusing on that. And then the third one is spontaneity. And that means you're starting to tune into those thoughts that spontaneously land in your mind. And That may sound scary, but keep with me and trust me on this, okay? So when God speaks, occasionally it will sound like an audible booming voice. I've never heard it that way. And some people do, but they don't hear him that way all the time. So it's usually going to sound like that still small voice that Elijah talked about, right? So you're tuning into that still small voice that is coming into your mind from your heart not from your logic and reason, okay? So stillness, vision, spontaneity, tuning into those thoughts that are flowing in. And then the fourth one is journaling. And that means write down what you're hearing. So as you're hearing it, you're like taking notes, okay? So don't listen for a long time and then try to remember. These thoughts start coming, just start writing them, okay? Write them down as they come. Do not analyze them yet, okay? Because then your logic and reason will start to say, I don't know if that's God. I'm not sure. Mm, I don't think so. And then it's like hanging the phone up on God, okay? So once we've called him 
and he's talking, we don't want to hang up the phone on him. So stillness, vision, spontaneity, and journaling. There's actually some uh, hand motions too that you can do. So stillness, vision, spontaneity, and journaling. Okay, so that will help you remember it. But again, you can write these down. So you're saying, well, how do I know it's from God? So that's when you want to evaluate it. So you're going to write it down in a journal, and then you're going to go back when you're done and read it. Now, Satan also, his voice, his demonic voices often sound like those thoughts that light in our mind. So we have to be able to tell the difference. Well, it's actually pretty easy because they are starkly contrasted. So how do we know if this is from God? Okay, well, if it's encouraging and loving, then it's from God. Okay, if it's discouraging and condemning, it's from Satan. If it lines up with what's in the Bible, it's most likely from God. If it doesn't line up with what's in the Bible, it is not from God. Okay, that's going to be from the enemy. If it brings life, Okay, that's from God. If it sucks the life out of you, that's from Satan. If it brings conviction and transformation, then that's from God. If it brings condemnation and despair, then that's from Satan. And you can see how starkly contrasting those are. The other thing is, let someone that you trust read it and say, do you think this is from God? And they will probably say yes or no. And you're welcome to email me and I will be happy to look it over and tell you if that feels the safest for you. But find someone that you trust, okay? And this is an amazing thing that I, I just want to read you one of mine. Now, journaling is very personal, so normally I wouldn't share, but I found an entry that I thought, I think I can share that one. To give you a taste because when you hear from God, normally you hear a word or a phrase, but this is allowing you to hear entire paragraphs. Okay, so this is a journal entry that I wrote on December 30th of 2023. And I like to start by saying something to Jesus, kind of prime the pump. So I said, Good morning, Jesus. I'm listening. And this is what Jesus said back to me. Thank you for sitting at my feet and worshiping me. That does more for your heart than just about anything else. I desire time with you and I enjoy it. You have a beautiful soul and I love communing with you. Look through my eyes at the world around you. It becomes a world of possibilities. Like the secret garden, there is life hiding underneath what looks like death and destruction. My purposes can never be thwarted. I am the author of life, the perfecter of life. There is nothing too dead that I can't revive it. Look at Lazarus. Even dead dreams can be revived. Look at Abraham and Zechariah and Moses. Nothing is too hard for me. Nothing. Keep that in mind. I appreciate your belief in my miracle working power. Look for it, sense it, call it forth. Pray for manifestation. There's a whole wide world out there. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to follow me wholeheartedly with abandon. Don't be afraid or hesitant to relax into me. You are safe in my arms. And then I said, help me think like you, Lord. And Jesus said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Join your heart with mine and you will understand my thoughts. Let me mend those last broken places in your heart and free you from those last fears. Okay. And so you can see how personal it was, how loving, how encouraging, and even things like when he said, it's like the secret garden. Well, that's a children's book that I've always loved, the secret garden. So he's even referencing something that's personal to me. And that's what he's going to do to you. So it may not sound anything like what I just read, because he's going to talk your language, okay? If you're a very Southern speaker, he's going to speak Southern, okay? That's just how he's going to do it. So it should be personal and it should make you feel loved and encouraged. And like I said, even when 
he brings conviction to my heart, it's always in a loving way, okay? And it's to lead me to transformation. It's not for me to hang my head and, and feel condemned from it. So I encourage you to try this. And just as a little reference so that you know where Mark Verkler kind of got this idea from, these four keys, he references Habakkuk 2, 1 and 2. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give this complaint. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. So I will stand at my watch that's being still. And as a watch, you're, you're looking, right? And then he says, I will look to see what he will say. So you're looking to, we usually we hear what they're going to say. This says, see what you're going to say. So you're looking to Jesus to see what he's going to say. And you're listening and you're writing it down. Write down the revelation. Okay, so that's where he pulled those from. And again, you can reference more of his materials. I'll put a link to that. But I encourage you to try this. And I like to try it with some instrumental quiet music. That also helps me to quiet down and get focused. So that's up to you. But put on some quiet music and then quiet yourself down. That's stillness. Okay, stillness. Look for vision. Vision, look for yourself with Jesus. Then tune to those spontaneous thoughts, spontaneity. And then journaling, write it down. And again, don't evaluate it. Go back and evaluate it. I would love to hear from you if you try this and you hear from God and it blesses you. Please let me know in the comments. You can also email me if you like, Anne, A-N-N-E, at SynergiaMM.com. That's S-Y-N-E-R-G-I-A-M-M dot com. And the MM is for Marriage Mentoring. So thank you so much for joining me today. I pray that this literally changes your life. Go enjoy and peace.